What exactly is light? We've been searching for the answer to this question for centuries. Newton believed it was made up of tiny particles. But Young's double slit experiment and Maxwell's electromagnetic wave equations proved it to be a wave, so it seemed like the matter was settled. That's when Albert Einstein entered the picture. In his time, there was an experiment in the corridors of physics that no one could explain. When high frequency light or UV rays are shone on a metal, electrons get ejected from the metal and this experiment was called the photoelectric effect. But why is it so hard to understand this in wave terms? The wave should give energy to the electrons and make them come out. What's the problem? The first problem is that if light is a wave, it carries continuous energy. Even with low frequency light, electrons could gradually absorb energy. They should then be able to come out, but that doesn't happen. At low frequencies, electrons won't eject from the metal. The second problem is that if you increase the light's intensity, the wave's total energy should increase as well. That means when electrons are ejected from the metal, they should come out faster, i.e. with more kinetic energy. But that doesn't happen either, no matter how many waves of a given frequency you shine on it. The electron's energy remains the same. Scientists had no answer to any of these questions, and Einstein was also struggling to find one. Before Einstein, Planck had proposed the theory of energy quantization, according to which electrons can only gain or release energy in fixed amounts. No more and no less than that fixed amount, Einstein applied his intellect and further expanded Planck's theory. If light's energy is absorbed or released by an electron only in fixed amounts, could it be that light's own energy exists in a quantized form. In other words, the energy of light, which is considered a wave, is not continuous but a fixed quantity, meaning it behaves like a particle. Einstein named these light particles photons. Let's understand this with an analogy. Suppose your ball is stuck in a tree, which here represents the electron, and to bring it down you have to throw stones, that is photons. If the stones are very small, no matter how many you throw, the ball won't come down. That means the photons have too little energy. This case represents low frequency light. But what if one after another many small stones hit the ball, then there would be enough energy to knock the ball down? A lot of small stones means low frequency, but high intensity. If many stones strike together, the ball can still fall, and the same actually happens with electrons. When low frequency, high intensity light hits a metal, sometimes an electron absorbs the energy of more than one photon and is emitted. But since an electron is so small, the probability of that is very low. On the other hand, if you throw larger stones, that is, high frequency photons, the harder the stones strike, the faster the ball will fly out, meaning more kinetic energy. And by treating light as particles in this way, all the unsolved questions of the photoelectric effect were answered. And Einstein proved that light isn't just a wave, but also exhibits particle behavior. If watching our videos helps you learn physics, if you wish to learn or teach it, consider joining our membership.